As a high schooler, it can feel like a lot of your future is riding on standardized test scores, which can make the whole process super overwhelming. To make things worse, you'll need to decide which test you'll take before you even begin to prepare. It's a big decision, but don't worry, we're here to help. Hi everyone, my name is Shravya and welcome back to College Mind. Today we'll break down the differences between the two standardized tests so you can make an informed decision on which exam to take. Let's get the most common question out of the way first. Which test is easier? Well, unfortunately, there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Different tests are easier for different students. Instead of asking which is less difficult, it'll be more helpful to think about the components of each test and which is better suited to your strengths personally. The SAT consists of three sections, reading, writing and language, and math. The ACT, meanwhile, consists of five sections, English, math, reading, science, and an optional essay. Besides the addition of a science section on the ACT and some differences in their respective math sections, most of the content on the two tests is actually quite similar. Ultimately, you'll still need to make your own decision based on your personal strengths, needs, and preferences. You might be tempted to take both tests and then submit whichever score is relatively higher, but we at College Vine aren't big fans of this strategy. Instead, we encourage our students to choose one and focus on it explicitly. This gives you more time to learn the test and the appropriate strategy for it, ensuring that you get the highest score possible. Okay, to get started, let's talk about time. Both tests are about three hours long. The ACT is about five minutes shorter, but it has significantly more questions on it, meaning you'll need to move at a much faster pace. On the ACT math section, for example, you'll have an average of 60 seconds per question, while on the SAT math section, you'll have an average of 81 seconds per question. This difference may sound small, but any extra time you spend on a single question will have to be borrowed from the rest of the section. And before you know it, you could be struggling to just read through the questions before you mark down an answer. So if you need more time to consider your answers or don't want to have to deal with the pressure of rushing to complete a section, then the SAT may be better suited to your pacing and strengths. Now onto exam content. One of the major differences between these two exams is that the SAT doesn't have a science section. So if science is your jam, the ACT may be better suited to your strengths. That said, the ACT science section doesn't really measure scientific knowledge. It actually measures skills relevant to science, like data analysis and critical thinking. While you won't be asked to memorize the periodic table or to design a hypothetical experiment, your scientific knowledge will still come in handy on this section of the test. If you're familiar with scientific terminology and are comfortable thinking in those terms, you'll spend less time thinking about what a question is asking you to do and more time thinking about the best answer. On a quickly paced test such as the ACT, this can be an important distinction. On the subject of subjects, you should also think about your strengths in math. The first thing you'll notice is that the SAT math section includes a portion where you're not allowed to use a calculator. To be fair, the SAT no calculator section is relatively straightforward, but if you're dependent on the wonders of modern technology, the ACT may be a better alternative. The content of the math sections is also slightly different. The SAT, for example, is heavy on algebra and data analysis. Since there is no science section, all those questions about interpreting graphs and data sets are included in the math section. Trigonometry and geometry questions actually only account for less than 10% of the SAT math section. On the other hand, the ACT covers a broader base of knowledge with a heavier emphasis on geometry and trig, which make up to one third of this section. So if you excel at these topics or if you struggle with algebra, your strengths may be better highlighted by the ACT and vice versa for the SAT. Now onto location. There are some differences regarding which test is more popular in certain regions. In general, the SAT is more popular with students on the east and west coasts and those in private schools, while the ACT is more popular with students in the Midwest and those in public schools. However, both tests will be accepted at every four-year college in the country. You'll just want to make sure that you can actually take the test of your choice in your area. There are test centers for each located in each state, but some are further apart than others. If there are no test locations close to your home, you might need to consider the other test or think about travel plans. You'll also want to look into whether your state offers an annual in-school test sitting, where the state covers the cost of your test. 19 states currently have this practice for the ACT, 13 of which actually require the test for all high school juniors. If you know that you'll already be taking one of the exams, then you might consider sticking with the same test offered for free, especially if the other factors I mentioned earlier don't hold much weight for you. Also, if you're concerned about paying for the tests, both the SAT and ACT offer fee waivers both for registration fees and for sending in score reports. The last thing you'll want to consider is the preliminary SAT or PSAT. If you took the PSAT as a freshman or sophomore and performed well, then you might consider vying for a National Merit Scholarship. 
Scoring within the top 1% on the PSAT within your state will earn you the prestigious title of National Merit Semi-Finalist, from which you can apply to become a finalist. Some colleges, such as the University of Alabama, even offer automatic full rides to both National Merit Finalists and Semi-Finalists as well. If you do decide to focus on PSAT prep, it only makes sense to choose the SAT over the ACT, since you'll already be doing SAT-style practice questions. But if you're set on the ACT, you might still want to attempt the PSAT for the perks we just mentioned, especially if you live in a state with historically less competitive scores. Make sure to check out our blog post linked below for more information on PSAT cutoffs. So there you have it. Timing, content, and location, the main differences between the SAT and ACT. If you're still not sure which test to pick, consider taking a practice exam in each and seeing how you score. We hope this video was helpful in figuring out which test you should take. Make sure to check out our other resources like our blog, Chancing Engine, and live streams where you can regularly find me every week, each linked below for all your admissions related needs. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all our upcoming content. Thanks for watching and see you next time.